I figured as I walked along here, I'd show you my little assistant. Yep, the official guidebook. Have it right with me as I walk through Flushing Meadow. I've just entered the Flushing Meadow Park. It is right now in October of 2009. Flushing Meadow, home of two World's Fairs, including this 1964 1965 New York World's Fair, and this is its symbol, the Unisphere, the largest globe of the world on Earth. People in a 64-65 World's Fair chat room have stated that the fencing around the Unisphere is because workers are working on it. Try to fix the pond for that. By the way, a poll was taken of those people, and over 80% want the fair back here in Flushing Meadow Park. The stainless steel rings held by wire to the Unisphere represents man's achievements in space up until 1964. These buildings you'll probably recognize from Men in Black. They are two of the most famous buildings, or maybe I should say three of the most famous buildings, towers, or maybe, at the fair, even in Queens. They could also be called Queens' greatest slums since uh, they're, they've been unoccupied for many years. These are the towers of the New York State Pavilion. Highest mark on the fair. Now they are the home to a theater. The interior of the New York State Tent of Tomorrow is in a real state of disrepair. Folks, beyond those trees lies Louis Armstrong Stadium. It was the Singer Bowl for the 1964 to 1965 New York World's Fair. Now part of the National Tennis Center here at Flushing Meadow. A mural dedicated to one of the many pavilions of the fair, the Fountains of the Planets. If from what I get in my old guidebook was right, this would be what is left of what was called the Fountain of the Planets. A great fountain that had many lights, but now it stands alone in what used to be called Pool of Industry. the Westinghouse Pavilion. Imagine this is a place where helicopters landed. Now 
apparent that they are doing some restoration work to the Hall of Fame, excuse me, Hall of Science. As you can see, this canvas around it. Achievements in space, that was one of the things of the World's Fair. This is one of the two original rockets still located in Flushing Meadow Park. A few years ago, they decided to restore these old rockets. We pan left. And just beyond the grove of trees is another one of the rockets. The Hall of Science is probably the most World's Fair-like of all the attractions right here in Flushing Meadow Park. One of the statues of the fair was the rocket thrower. Ladies and gentlemen, this is possibly the last remaining remnant of the 3940 World's Fair, the Queen's Museum of Art. It was the New York City Pavilion in both World's Fairs, 1939-40 and 1964-65. And from the late 40s up until the early 50s, it was the home of the UN General Assembly. We start off in Manhattan. This is the World's Fair panorama of New York City. It was updated in the 1990s, and as you can see, it still had the World Trade Center. It had tram cars moving around it during the fair, but they are since gone. This is the Queen's Museum of Art, folks. And it's still here, even with the construction. This boathouse, it is rumored, is also from the 39 World's Fair. However, I only heard about that on a blog. It is only believed that. It sits here on Meadow Lake, but nothing really substantiated the claim so far as I could see. Ladies and gentlemen, special subway trains will run to the fair right here to Willits Point Station, where the Long Island Railroad comes in. And, well, if you turned around like I am doing and started down this ramp, you would have been at the main entrance to the fair, a fair that had a lot of stuff. Many pavilions and countries were here. You're not going to believe what my little book told me. In 1965, admission to Shea Stadium was 75 cents to three and a half bucks. Wow, that was expensive. Walking down. <laughs> 